Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a video that you guys really liked the first time that I tried it out. It's a speed review video. So basically, I round up all of the new makeup that I've been playing with lately and I give you these quick paced, hopefully, you know I struggle with that, thoughts on all the new makeup that I have been testing. So some of these are products that I told you I would come back once I've used them more. Some of these are products I haven't even maybe mentioned. I've used them on the side and I'm coming back to let you know my thoughts on them. So it's just a roundup. Let's get into it. I want to say a huge thank you to Beauty Pie for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I've been testing their products for the last month and I am very, very impressed with this brand. If you've never heard of Beauty Pie before, what stood out to me about this brand is the quality and the impressive price point. Essentially, they say they are able to provide you luxury products without the middleman. The products are coming from the same labs as all of our favorite luxury brands without that 10 times markup. I've been looking to see where the products were made in and they definitely source the products from the same places that the luxury brands that we typically know on the market source from. So there's a lot of products from like Italy and France and I really do feel like the quality translates to luxury products. I've been very impressed. Of course, I wouldn't have taken this sponsorship if I wasn't impressed with the luxury quality that they have. Interesting how they work. Of course, you can shop from their website regularly, but you can also sign up to be a part of their Beauty Pie annual membership. So their membership is $59 annually so there's no monthly limits you don't pay per month but beauty buy considers themselves to be a shopping service you get to pick exactly what you want it's not a subscription where the items are sent to you and you don't get to pick what you want which is really awesome so if you pay for the annual membership you get a hugely discounted price of what they would normally sell the products from without the membership. And I think the membership is a really great Christmas gift to consider. Either you can become a member and get some really great luxury products at a really great price to give to others, or you can gift the membership to a loved one. So I'm gonna be sharing with you mostly makeup favorites, but they offer a lot of awesome products. I've heard amazing things about their skincare that I personally haven't gotten the opportunity yet to try, but heard great things about their ingredients. They also have color, fragrance, candles, hair and body care, and supplements. So it's basically like a one-stop shop for all beauty products. So let me share some of the products that I've been absolutely loving. Kind of not makeup, but I just want to share this set of hair ties right here. So these are luxury mulberry silk hair scrunchie bobbles, and they come in like a cute ornament style packaging. Typical price for this is $35 for six silk scrunchies, but with the member price, if you do sign up to be a member, it's going to be $18.80. And silk scrunchies are really great because they don't tug at your hair. I also am really into their candles. So this particular scent is a gingerbread almond and orange blossom. First of all, I think this is so pretty. I It's really cute for the holidays. It has a beautiful scent to it. It's different. I've never smelled anything like this it's holiday but not the typical like true Christmas tree. So this typical price is $75 but with the members price you get it for $27.96. This is made in France right? Yeah awesome. So I love that they have like a hot chocolate and peppermint candle that I really want to try. <laughs> it looks good. And by the way these first few products that I'm pulling are from their holiday shop so they're really great gifts. One thing that I also used today were the Beauty Pie shadow sticks. So I have the shade in taupe all in my crease and then I also have the shade wild violet all over my lid. These are beautiful cream shadow sticks very comparable to Laura Mercier. I use my fingers to apply these. It was super easy to get a simple look like this. I put end taupe in my crease and I just blended it out with my finger and then I use the shade wild violet all on my lid just to get a really 
quick and easy, quick and dirty eye look. I saw in their holiday shop, they do have this shadow stick mini set. $50 is the typical price. If you remember, you pay $17.87. So these are really nice quality. They last a long time. I have no creasing going on. Very, very pretty. Let's see, another item in their holiday shop that I'm using today is the Pro Glow Highlighter Illuminating Powder in Knockout Gold. It is so smooth on my cheek. Now, it's a little extra blending right now because I do have a cream highlight underneath, but it really does look smooth on this skin and blends in seamlessly. I mean, it's that kind of like Italian highlight formula that I typically love. Yeah, and it's made in Italy, so <laughs> that explains that. Super beautiful highlight. Also, some products that aren't on their holiday shop that I love. This Deluxe Precision Liquid Liner is amazing. So the typical price is $30, and then you can get the member's price, which is $9.53. So this is not too liquidy of a liquid liner, so it's very easy to be precise with it, and it does not fade or bleed at all. I've been really impressed with how this wears on the eye. And then this, hear me out, is the best product that I've tried from this brand thus far. And I feel like I've tried a good amount. I really narrowed down my favorites for you guys. This is the Triple Beauty Luminizing Wand. It's like a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury, but I think I like it better than the Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not even kidding you. I, I'm not gonna throw out words like that unless <laughs> it's for a good reason. So this is the typical style that's just like the Charlotte Tilbury. This is better. It works over powders or under powders and it blends into the skin like a moisturizer. It is a little thicker than the Charlotte Tilbury, but it literally sinks in like a moisturizer. It has a moisturizer consistency, so it feels super hydrating on the skin. I really do not like liquid highlighters. This is worth the full price, which is $30, but you can get it for $7.99. I cannot believe that. This is amazing. Anyways, I love the products so far that I've tried from Beauty Pie. Side note, just some other ones that I've liked. The Super Cheek Cream Blushes are super duper nice. And then I also like this lip oil that they have. It's called the Wonder Glass Collagen Lip Oil. I've never smelled a lip product like this and it's delicious. I've got to be honest with you guys, Beauty Pie really shocked me with the quality of their products and I've heard nothing but good things about their skincare. So I'm also really curious about that and I feel really happy that Beauty Pie reached out to me because I found some super good products from them. So anyways, if you are interested, I will have the link down below to all of the products that I mentioned on Beauty Pie as well as the link to their membership if you would like to join or get it as a gift for somebody. Thank you, Beauty Pie, for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Let's get into the other products that I've recently been playing with. Okay, let's start off with primers. So I tried two. The first one that I tried is the Milani Chill Out Soothing Primer. I'm eh about this. Like, it's fine, but I do feel like it's almost like an extra step. It really doesn't do anything for my skin. It says it's blurs imperfections. I don't notice anything particularly too soothing about it. It's supposed to give you a satin matte finish, which I do agree with, but honestly, this just feels like an extra layer on my skin. It's not bad, but it's just not necessary as a part of my makeup routine. So I'm eh about it. I think Milani has really great primers, probably some of my favorite primers from the drugstore. So I would recommend other primers for Milani over this one. The next primer that I've been trying, I did a haul from Derm Store a few weeks ago. This is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer Base. And I had so many of you ask me to update you guys. So here it is. And I really like this. I like this a lot better than the Milani. This one is also supposed to like blur and smooth imperfections. And I feel like it really does. You guys did inform me that this was reformulated and Tati loved the old formulation so I was like kind of bummed because I was hoping that I would like this and it wasn't the same formulation but I still like this formulation whatever it is I really do feel like it lays down a great smoothing base before makeup and it also has a very slight hydrating element to it which I really do appreciate because I do have drier skin so if you were looking into this I do recommend this I like this a lot let's get into foundations we're gonna start off with the first foundation that I have on right now well the only this is by Orsay and this is the skin perfecting foundation they did give this to me in PR and the brand really intrigues me because they say they make the undertones specifically for Asian skin and I I am half Asian, but I really don't have to like, <laughs> this is gonna sound dumb, but I, I don't have like an Asian undertone or anything. So that isn't something that I struggled with, but I do notice they do have like kind of like an olive -y 
yellowish undertone. So if you do have olive skin, I definitely recommend looking into this foundation. It is very pricey. They actually just became available at Neiman Marcus, which is awesome for them. I'm like lukewarm about this foundation. It's not a bad foundation, but it also isn't a great foundation. I love the way that this foundation looks when I first apply it. I feel like it looks extremely skin-like and healthy, but I feel like it doesn't hold up throughout the day the best. It starts to look a little bit more heavy and separates a bit. It's not terrible. If I prep my skin and wear this in the right weather, it looks good, but I do have to take extra measures to make sure that it looks good if that makes sense, which I don't think makes it worth the price because it is a very expensive foundation. It's beautiful, but there's not enough ease of use personally considering the price. I also tried a tinted sunscreen, which a lot of you wanted my update on. This is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Sunscreen. I have mine in the shade 30 Peach. This is a little bit too warm and deep for me. I would have gotten a shade lighter if I purchased this myself. They were kind enough to send this to me in PR and I like this when I apply it but this does not wear well at all on me. Now I have more normal to dry skin but I find that this really separates on my skin and becomes almost looking cakey at the end of the day. In the beginning whenever I first apply it love it skin like beautiful but I just cannot get this to wear well for me. It just looks horrible at the end of the day if I'm being honest. So personally, I'm not that big of a fan of this, though I've heard a lot of other people have enjoyed it. So I don't know what's wrong with my skin, but this has not looked good at the end of the day for me. So it's not my favorite. I did try a new concealer. This is from Iconic London. They sent me a PR package of a multitude of products that I'm going to be talking about. This is the Seamless Concealer. And at first, I loved this. I think I put it in last month's monthly favorites. I'm here to update you that I really, really still like it but it's a bit too thick. So the finish of it is really skin-like. I almost feel like this would be a great foundation because the finish is so beautiful. And I love the way that it spreads onto the skin. And upon initial application, everything looks flawless. But I will say on the under eyes to be careful because it is a bit of a thicker consistency. So it doesn't look good in the fine lines. It really starts to crease in there. So to combat that, I just want to advise you to use a lighter layer underneath the eyes which is fine, that helps it a lot. But for me, I'm not really gonna wear this concealer if I'm not wearing an eyeshadow look because when I don't have eyeshadow on, you can really see where the concealer's creasing as opposed to when I'm wearing an eyeshadow look, I can kind of run it along the lower lash line and that conceals where it is sinking into those fine lines. But yeah, I still really like this. Just be aware it's a bit thicker and unflattering under creasy parts of your face. Next up, I have a setting powder. This is from Orsay. Again, this is the Come Closer setting powder. I don't really like this personally. I find that it disagrees with a lot of my concealers. It makes my under eyes look very textured. And first of all, it does not agree with the Iconic London concealer. So if you happen to have both, don't put them together, especially a heavy layer. I can get away with using this with most concealers concealers if I lightly powder, but if I bake or something, this really does misbehave and shows a lot of texture on my skin. It's not terrible, but I just have a lot of other powders that I prefer, especially because this is at a more expensive price point. It looks good in the center of my face right now. It is a little bit more on the smoothing side, but it's not the smoothest and it's not the most versatile with most products. It's quite picky with what it what likes to work with. So for me, not as into this. Okay, I've talked about this product a lot, but I did want to get my final words in on the Glowish Huda Beauty Powders because at first, hated them. Then I ended up putting a color in my favorites. So here's my final thoughts on the Glowish Powders by Huda Beauty. Do not use these as powder foundations if you're like me at all. I hated it used in that way. But I love to use the shade Light Medium as a natural everyday bronzer. It's just a few shades darker than my natural skin tone. Has a beautiful luminous finish which actually almost blurs the outer layers of my skin. If you get towards the inner parts of my face, it emphasizes texture. But if you keep it on the outside, it looks really good as a bronzer or to blend out bronzer. So if you use a bronzer that might be, maybe looked a little bit muddy, was too dark, didn't blend as well, maybe looks a little patchy, I will use this to blend it over top and it looks fabulous. I also really like the shade Light as either A, a highlight. If I'm going for a super natural look, this will just add a 
almost imperceptible glow on the high points of your face or if I get a really really loose brush I will apply this all over my face and it is a great finishing powder not a setting powder do not use this to set because it will not look good but as just an over veil of glow beautiful. This is a super new cool product that came out from Iconic London. A few of you asked me about it. It was available on Sephora as well as the Iconic London website. These are the Precision Duo Contour Pot. Pr full transparency. I had an awesome opportunity to create an Instagram reel on my Instagram for them demoing this product and I really do like this product. It's not perfect. I will say that but how these work basically is they have two layers. The first layer towards the bottom is going to be the cream product and then the next layer towards the top is a powder product. I love the contour cream. It does not give you a lot of pigment which really makes it very foolproof. So if you're new to contouring I think you will really like this cream contour. I prefer to use the shade medium. The shade light is very very light so I think if you are quite fair you will be very happy with the light shade. Um, but I do love the cream. It's very easy to use. It's a little bit more putty like than I would prefer. I do wish it had more of a creamy consistency but it still is very easy to work with. I just use this Iconic London paddle brush to blend it out. It's the powder side that isn't my favorite tone. They're very very cool and this is a contour color so I'm not going to say bad things about them because it is actually like a true contour color. I just think the medium is a bit too dark for what I would prefer in the medium pot. I much prefer the light contouring shade but this is still quite light so I feel like they don't have the perfect shade for my skin tone in these but the quality on them is really nice. I think it's a really neat concept. I think these are great for beginners if you're getting into cream contouring and setting with powder. I actually really like this. I just would recommend maybe buying them on sale. Not quite at full price because they're not perfect, you know? All right, let's move in to blushes, cream blushes. Also from Iconic London, I have these sheer blushes. At first I thought I really liked these. The more that I've used them, they're not my all-time favorite <laughs> cream blush formula. Very good if you are on the fair side. These are extremely sheer, but to me they are sheer to a flaw. They're a bit too liquidy and wet looking on the skin to where I find it hard to kind of control. Then it just the color disappears. Without setting these with powder, I'm not as big of a fan of these. Now, if I have a tinted moisturizer day, I do like these because of how sheer they are, but still, they're just, they're not my favorite. They're a little bit too watery for me. I find that when I use them, I always over blend them out, and then I have pink on places on my face that I don't necessarily want them. So these are good, but they're not my favorite. Like. On my other cheek today, I used the Beauty Pie Super Cheek Bear Blush and this made the Iconic London like look not that good. <laughs> These are a beautiful cream blush formula by the way. I had this over powder and it still looked good. This just has more oomph to it, more pigment. It is more of a matte finish on the skin. Compa this is not meant to be a part of this but I just need to compare. It did have more of a matte finish. I don't know. I just prefer cream blushes more so in this pot format that aren't quite so shiny and sheer as opposed to something like the Iconic London. So it's a eh for me. So to set my cream blush today, I have this By Terry Brightening CC palette. This is also one of the items that I picked up from my Derm store haul. Oh my gosh, this is not a new product at all, but I just wanted to update you that it is beautiful. I love this blush palette. And even this color right here I thought was gonna be too light. It actually is a very beautiful, subtle blush on my skin. So it has a strong floral scent that I think some of you are not gonna like. So if you don't like your powders scented, you won't like this, but I like it. Mm, it smells like a delicious sweet floral lotion whenever you open it and I think the colors in here are beautiful they are subtle but they still pack a punch I mixed these two shades on the apple of my cheek and then I use this one to kind of blend out the edges of my cream blush stunning stunning blush palette it is quite pricey but if you've been eyeing it I have to say it's worth the wait I've been eyeing it for quite some time and I'm really really happy with this this is one of the few by Terry products that I own I think I only own their powder and that's it but I love this this is awesome so this is in the shade beach bomb by the way highly recommend this gorgeous quad unfortunately the Dior rouge blush in the atelier of dreams did not work out for me my opinion in my original review of this collection still stands this blush is way too glittery it's literally a glitter bomb okay I love
love Dior blushes. They have some of my all-time favorite formulas. This was not what I had hoped it would be. So first of all, it's in the shade Hologram, and it literally is like kind of holographic, but not in a flattering way. And there are glitter particles embedded into this. So when I first reviewed this and I wore this, I went on a walk outside with Jose, and he looked at me, and he started smiling, and he was like, you're glittery. So if my husband even noticed in the sun that I had glitter all over my face from this, it's a no for me. This is way too expensive to look like this on the face. It has no base pigment, really. A very slight pinky hue, but this is all glitter. I feel like this is not what I paid for. Do not recommend that. And then I also did want to give a final update on the Glowish Huda Beauty blushes because I mostly talked about the powders and didn't, didn't get too into the blushes, but these are nice. I mean, I'm not head over heels for these, but I do like them. I think the colors are very pretty and they last quite a long time. So I like that they are, are not like a powdery formula. You don't get any kickback or anything. So it's just a very quick, easy one and done blush to apply. And I feel like they do stay all day. They remind me a lot of the Tarte Amazonian Clay style formula in that you know it's gonna last a long time. But they aren't anything amazing either. Like I like them, but they don't stand out to me as an amazing blush formula. For example, the by Terry right away, I was like, yes, this is awesome. I didn't feel that way about these, but I also didn't have anything bad to say. Like, these are good. I like them. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I'm not a liquid luminizer person. I have a very small collection because I just don't get into them. But Iconic London sent me their illuminator, which is very, very popular. So this is just the original. And this is really nice. It works great over powders. It is a bit too metallic for my preference. For reference, just to compare, and I didn't mean to do this, but I use the Beauty Pie on this side and the Iconic London on this side. This side is definitely more metallic, which is not necessarily what I want. So if you like an illuminator that's more skin-like and glowy, I recommend the Beauty Pie over the Iconic London. But if you like something that does have more of that chrome-like metallic finish, I do recommend the Iconic London. This one, I felt didn't blend into the skin quite as good as the Beauty Pie, but it's still very, 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 very nice. It's definitely a, one of the better illuminators that I've tried. So I like it. It's just not the formula for me and my preferences. Okay, this is the last of the Iconic London stuff, I swear. <laughs> but they did send me their Glaze crayons, and these are awesome. So right now I've only used the two lighter shades, and I will have a tutorial using them coming up towards the end of de December for a holiday look, but these are awesome for the holidays. They have a lot of other colors. So how it works is you have a cream stick on one side, and then you have a glitter topper on the other. I'm happy with just the cream side for these. Like today I have just the lightest one, which is in the shade quartz just to highlight my inner corners you can kind of put it right here beautiful but you can put them all over the lid it's beautiful but if you want a little extra oomph you have a glitter side to really make it sparkle so i'm a big sparkly eye person these are very easy for a one and done holiday eye so if you're going to some holiday events these are awesome to have just blend the cream out and then put a little bit of the glitter on top and you're good to go. It lasts all day. I love these. I think these are awesome. I wish more people were talking about these because they're super good. Okay, the last lid topper that I have to share with you guys. It's unfortunate, but I really don't like this. And I've tried it multiple times and I just can't get it to work for me, unfortunately. And I think these were trending on TikTok, but this is by Danessa Myricks and they are the Infinite Chrome Flakes. So maybe it's just the shade I picked up, but I got the shade Moonlight. And in this container, how stunning does this look? I had different expectations for this. Like I do realize it's like a chrome flake, but there is no base to this. I just feel like this is a gel with chunks of glitter flakes in here. And I have to have a colored base underneath for this to work, but it doesn't dry down on me. It literally is like a gel. So if you have hooded eyelids, you'll see like my skin, if I look down, it folds over my eyelid. When I have this on my eyelid, it literally sticks. Not only does it make my eye stick to itself, but it also creases the eyeshadow underneath. So what's the point of having a base if it's gonna crease? It ruins the makeup underneath. I just can't get this to work for me. And I heard from one of you that you said you loved it. Is it this color? Am I doing something wrong, but I can't get this to work for me. It looks dumb. 
<laughs> when I use it and messes up my makeup. So I told you guys I ordered this and then I never ever came back to it. So here we are. So I picked up the Heen Dash, which I love Heen Dash. I will purchase everything that he comes out with. <laughs> I think he is so sweet, so kind, and so talented. So he came out with the Hero Line. It's a liquid liner. So it comes in this really sleek silver packaging and it has a very nice, fine, what is this, a brush tip. I think I'm more of a felt tip liner kind of girl, but I really like this. I love the size of it. It makes it very easy to get a precise liner. It is a bit too liquidy and wet for my preferences. I pretty much like my eyeliner dry like a powder <laughs> because I feel like I have so much more control. But for a liquid liner, this is really <laughs> good. I think I might like this as it dries out a little bit more to where I have a little bit more precision and control, but it lasts all day. Once the liner is down, it's down, and thankfully the applicator is nice and small, so it is easy to create a wing. I'm just waiting for it to wear a little bit and to dry out a little bit because it, it is kind of liquidy for my preferences. It's a good liner. It absolutely is, but it's not my number one favorite, if you know what I mean. Okay, we're moving into the final portion, which is lips, and I'm super excited to talk about these. I love these way more than I had anticipated. So BK Beauty came out with a luxury lip line, which is what they call it, lip liners and lipsticks. So I really like the lip liners. They have an interesting shape to them, but it makes it very easy to apply. And they are our four very basic everyday wearable colors. So in my demo, I used Sweet Pea, which is a lighter pink one. Then I ate breakfast and I decided to come back with a darker lip because I've been trying to force myself to wear bolder lips for this time of year. So currently I have the shade Ultra Ego lighting my lips. These are very nice, very creaming. In terms of wear time, you know, they aren't up to par with my Charlotte Tilbury and Pat McGrath for longevity, but they are very, very good nonetheless. I think they're beautifully creamy, easy to apply, really great basic colors to start off with. So I like these a lot. The lipsticks, mm, mm. So BK Beauty also has the lipsticks. This formula, to die for. So right now I have on the shade Passion, which is the deepest color. I cannot get over these lipsticks, you guys. They are so, so hydrating and I just love building them and building them and building them. So they're not gonna dry out your lips. Pretty five basic wearable colors. But what is so special about these is if you find that you have a lot of lines in your lips, these are gonna glide right over those lines and fill them in. So it makes your lips look more plump and smooth. So I do not have enough good things to say about this formula. And the first collection she came out with is very, very pinky, which I know is not up everybody's alley. Lisa, please expand the colors because I love the formula so much. I need more. <laughs> I'm thinking like beiges and brown. Mm. You guys know I love a good beige nude lip. So I would love to see some more brown based colors for myself personally, that's me being selfish. I'm not just saying this because I love Lisa and I do and she's so kind, but these lipstick formulas, bomb, love them. Okay, the last product that I have to talk about, kind of random, but I did haul this. So I thought I would tell you guys. I picked up the Morphe and Madison Beer Lip Gloss collaboration in the shade Mercury because this is my kind of nude shade and I love the Morphe lip glosses. I know that's crazy, but I do. And I actually went through and decluttered a lot of my older Morphe lip glosses. So this is one of the few I have left. I love the Morphe lip gloss formula. Um, I think they have good pigmentation. They're comfortable. They're not sticky. They're made in the USA. Yeah, and this color is gorgeous, so. I've been loving this. But anyways, there we have it. Those are all the products that I have to update you guys on. If you're curious about the products that I picked up for all of the Sephora sale stuff, that will be in the next speed updates. This was like the stuff I collected before, but the Sephora one should be up pretty soon in a few weeks. But yeah, I hope you guys are still loving this style of video. I have a lot of fun with it and it kind of feels satisfying for me to come back and close the chapter on some of these products to let you know my final thoughts after giving them lots of trials and tribulations. And again, a huge thank you for Beauty Pie for sponsoring a portion of today's video. I'm really excited about the brand. Honestly, you guys, really good quality stuff. So definitely check out their website down below. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.